Amen. Welcome to our morning service. We're glad to have you with us on today. Thank God to have you with us virtually, watching on Facebook Live. We tell God, thank you for, the, for you. For this is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So wherever you are, I ask you to invite God and go ahead and give God a hand of praise. Go ahead and tell God, thank you for being so awesome. Thank you for being so kind, for he is a wonderful, wonderful God. So right there in your living room, right there in your bedroom, right there uh, wherever you are in your home, call the family in. It is now time for praise and worship. So let's go ahead and clap our hands and give God the glory. Go ahead and shake yourself. Go ahead and say this is the day the Lord has made and I will be, will rejoice and be glad in it. The Bible says that everything that has breath, praise ye the Lord. So if you're breathing on the day, clap your hands.
would not rather than have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead, who delivers us from so great a death, and does deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. You also help me together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. I want to read that text for you in the NIV and not all of it. Let's go to uh, just verse 10 and verse 11 from the NIV. It says in verse 10 NIV, He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and He will deliver us again. On Him we have set our hope that He will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answers to the prayers of many. I want to speak to you from this subject today that God can do it again. Hallelujah. Go ahead and write in the text that God can do it again. Hallelujah. God can do it again. Good morning, uh, Holy Spirit. Good morning to the body of Christ who called out the redeemed of the Lord. It is good to be with you this morning. Uh, first, I'd like to tell everyone thank you, uh, the uh, Clifton Baptist Church, my family, my friends, for praying for me over the last week or two. I tell God, thank you for you that God is a healer. Amen. 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 The last time I was with you before I had that medical uh, uh, situation, God shared with us the claim and the promises of God. And during that time, we observed that with every I am statement, that Jesus made, there was also a promise connected to that claim. That's just how a little read you as we go to class. Uh, in John 6, 35, the Bible says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me will never thirst. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of of life. He goes on to say in John 10, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and go in and out and find pasture. He says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. He says, but I am come that he might have life and have it more abundantly. He goes on to say that I am the good shepherd. The shepherd gives his life for the sheep. In verse 14 of chapter 10, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known of my sheep. Jesus said uh, uh, in John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall yet live. And we saw uh, in John 14, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 15, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Uh, and he says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. So that's our recap of the I am statements. For in every I am statement, we found out that there was a claim and there was a, a promise connected to that claim. As we examine the promises of God, we are reassured that the promises of God are yes and amen. So that gives us hope that if God said it, that settles it. If God spoke it, it shall come to pass. That gives us assurance, that gives us hope that if God did it before, he can do it again. If God healed before, he can heal again. If God provided before, he can provide again. If God did it before, he can do it again. Amen. And I understand that we're living in difficult times. 
I understand that we are suffering. Uh, many of us are suffering. Many of us are trying to maneuver through life changes. We got all of these issues going on. Every time you turn on your TV, there's always some manner of evil coming forth. Well, whether it's black on black crime or police violence or people uh, dying because of coronavirus, there's some issue, some political way that's coming through some lies, some, some, something that want to beat down the man or the woman of God. You got people saying you're not all of that. If you, if, 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 if you believe in, in God, why is this happening? Why is it happening? Let me tell you something. If God made a way before, he can do it again. God is still in the blessing business. So you still got to be encouraged. You still got to have your hope. You still got to know that if God did it before, he can do it again. I come to let you know that God is a promise keeper. That God can do anything but fail. I come to let you know that God is concerned about you and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. You got to know that, that God will never leave you nor forsake you. In spite of the hell that you're going through, recognize that God is still there with you. In spite of what they say about you, God has not left you by yourself. In spite of what's coming your way, recognize that you're still on God's mind. In spite of, God can't do it again. Don't you give up on your God. Don't you throw in the tower on your God. God can't do it. Yes. Yes. So in our text, we find Paul in the second Corinthians, second epistle of Corinthians, and, and they say this is by his fourth letter. But in this introduction to in this letter, Paul says, Paul says, Blessed be God. Mm. And NIV says, Praise be to God. And the Father of our Lord. Jesus Christ. Blessed be God. Praise be to God. The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Who comfort us in all our tribulations. I'll stop right there. I need you to understand that your God is the God of all comfort who is able to comfort you in all of your trials all of your tribulations, don't you reckon, don't you forget that God is able to do anything but fail. Amen. Who covered us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Listen, we gotta understand that we gotta keep our praise in spite of what we're going on. We gotta bless the name of the Lord. We gotta praise the name of the Lord. Whatever you're going through, make sure you continue to esteem, lift up, praise, exalt the name of your God. Why? Because he's the God of all comfort. Yes. Who is able to comfort us in all our tribulations. Yes, I said all. Yes. All our tribulations, all our stress, all our aches and, 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 and upset of, of, of moments, all of those things that we encounter that cause us to stay up at night. He's able to provide you comfort. Say comfort, 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 comfort. Comfort means to be by the side of another. Comfort means to relieve, to support, to give solace and consolation and encouragement. Comfort shows up when you're down. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Sometimes when people come to comfort you, they don't have to say nothing. They just got to be there. Amen. Ah, sometimes we want God to always be saying something. But you just got to know that God is there. He may not be speaking right now, but he is still there. Amen. Yeah. Yes, Comfort means to be by the side of another. Oh, don't you know that God is on your side? He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I won't forget about you. I am concerned about your every move. I will order the steps of a righteous man. I'm thinking about your future. I have plans for your future. I provide you comfort. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. John 14, 16 through 18 says, and I will pray. The Father, 
And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither know of him, but you know him, for he dwell with you and shall be what? In you. Verse 18 says, here's our promise. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Somebody need to know. Somebody need to know that you are not alone. I know we may still be isolated. I know we still may feel like we by ourselves. But you need to know you are not alone. My daughter, my son, be encouraged and know that God is with you and he will not leave you comfortless. <clears throat> it may feel like you're going through it by yourself, but God is there. It may feel like you're all alone, but God is still there. It may feel like recognize that God will not leave you comfortless. I want you to know, depending on your Bible, whether it's uh, King James, New King James, NIV, you will find in between verses 3 and 7 either the word comfort or consolation, but a comfort, let's say comfort, about 10 times. Let's take a look. Verse 3, blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our comfort also abounded by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation, which is effectual and enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer. And whether we be comforted, it is for your comfort and salvation. And the hope uh, of you is steadfast, knowing that if as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall you also be of comfort. So why do you think God will leave you comfortless? <laughs> God promised to comfort us in our tribulations, in our trials, in our most difficult times. And because of this, we should be able to comfort somebody else. God is concerned about you. Listen, listen, he says in verse 4, he says in verse 4, who comfort us in all our tribulations, that you may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. Tell your neighbor, it's not all about you. Sometimes we just think life is just about us. It's not all about you. It's not all about you. You got to know who you're called to. You got to know that someone is waiting to hear your testimony. How God saved you. How God delivered you. How God provided for you. How God kept you. How God redeemed you. How God forgave you. How God favored you. How God blessed you. How God comforted you in your most difficult place. How God kept your mind staying on him when you wanted to lose it. How God stopped you from going in a tower when you wanted to jump off the bridge. How God kept you. In your most insecure place, in that place of selfishness, in that place of bitterness, in that place of sickness, in that place of no hope, how God kept you. Somebody's waiting to hear a testimony that God can do it again. Somebody's waiting for you to tell them if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Somebody's waiting to hear that God can. Somebody need to open up their mouth and stop whining and complaining about everything that you've been through and recognize what God has brought you through and share that God is able. God is able to reach way down and pull you up from the bucket now. God is able to heal your body. God is able to keep your flesh. Under control. 
resurrection and there is nothing too hard for my God. There is nothing that my God cannot do. I know your situation. I know, I know, I know. But God can. God You got to 
do it again. Because we'll be praying and we'll be praising and we'll be evangelizing. We'll be operating in our PPE. Our prayer, our praise and evangelism. Because God, somebody is waiting to hear what God has done in your life. So I don't know where you are. I don't want you to throw in your towel. I don't want you to quit. I don't want you to lose use the fact that we are isolated and, and, and have to worship the way we worship as an excuse to sin. Amen. Or as an excuse not to believe God. But you still got to declare that God can't do it again. And if God doesn't do it in your time frame, or God doesn't do it in your lifetime, it doesn't mean that God can't. As the boys are going into the fire, they say, well, if, even if he don't, we still know that he can. He still labels you. So God is still able to heal. He's still able to deliver. He's still able to set the captives free. He's still able to give you joy. He still is able to turn your situation around. So take all your issues, all your trials, all your tribulations and cast your cares upon him. We serve the God of comfort. So God comes to comfort you, to be there with you, to walk with you, to talk with you. God comes to reassure you that he's with you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shut up. You got to know that God is with you. And he's on your side. Yes, sir. Bow your heads wherever you are if you're watching. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, I never know how you're going to deliver this message, but God, I thank you. For the real assurance that God, you can't do it again. Whatever that it is, whether, Lord, we need to be saved, whether we need to be sanctified, whether we need to be justified, whether we need to be healed or delivered or set free. God, whether we need to be encouraged or uh, 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 positioned for a job or have favor placed upon our life. God, you can't do it again. God, we use the fact that you did it before and you can't do it again. So we hold on with hope that you're able and Lord, we know that you care about us. You're concerned about us. And Lord, it may be quiet right now in our life. We may not know what next move to make, but God, we trust that you're still there. Even if you're just sitting by us, God, on the sofa, we trust that you're still there. But God, give us wisdom to listen for the still, small voice. God, I come now praying for those that have lost something in this season. Praying for those that have experienced hardship in this season. Praying for those that do not know you as their Savior. God, I pray you being the God of comfort that you will not leave us comfortless, but you will send the Holy Spirit to be our God, to lead us and guide us into all truth, to teach us all things. To comfort our hearts and our minds. And Lord, for those of us that think we got it together, allow us to recognize our opportunities to witness and share the good news of the Lord. What you have done for us. Lord, allow us to use our mouth, our hands for your glory. For we are your hands in the earth. We are your mouthpiece in the earth. We are your feet in the earth. Use us for your glory. So someone can be encouraged that God, if you did it before, God, you can't do it again. We look at that man, that woman, that boy, that girl that do not know you in a part of their sin.
Pray right now that God will accept as a person and say, Allow them to extend their hand towards the screen and say this prayer. Dear God, come into my life. Come into my heart. I accept you as my Savior. I believe that God has raised Jesus from the dead. And I confess that I am a sinner. I confess that Jesus is Lord over my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you reach your hand, if you extended your hand, if you said those words, you are now saved. For the Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. If you did that, I want you to inbox us, email us, call the church, and let us know, hey, I've given my life to Christ. I need to go to the next steps. Because once you get saved, my brother, my daughter, you have to walk out your soul salvation. And we at the Baptist Church are committed to disciple those that have given their life to Christ. We will help you work out your soul salvation to learn about who Jesus is. So reach out and give us a call. Inbox us. Say, it's me, it's me, it's me. And one of our staff members will give you a call. And we'll pray with you. Amen. For those of you that are watching, if you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, you can sow. You can sow your seed. You can use the gift of fire. And make a donation. Bring your tithes and your offerings. So you'll see the upon the ground and watch God bless you with favor. I don't know where you are, but I do know if God did it before, He can do it again. Amen. Give God glory. Give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 We are excited just to be able to come into your home and tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah. We're now going to prepare for our communion. And I hope something was said in the day that will draw you closer to your God. Hallelujah. It is our custom that we read and declare the church covenant. Before taking part in the communion. So as you prepare and gather some bread and some wine or juice, we prepare to read the church covenant. Hallelujah. Church covenant reads, having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, we do now, in the presence of God, angels, and this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit, to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worships, orders, discipline, and doctrines, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to support the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and civil devotions, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintances, to walk some respect in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and in separating our deportment, to avoid our talent and backbiting and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale of and use of intoxicating drinks as a beverage, 
to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to cultivate Christian sympathy in feeling and courtesy in speech, to be slow to take offense but always ready for reconciliation, and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure without delay. We will always engage that when we move from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principle of God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.
to the bottle bottle and sing songs of life. Permission and command you to do the same. Whenever you go out, go out singing the praises of your God that's able to do anything but fail. Part of the class I was singing to you.
said you fought this before the prophets. 